Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. It is my pleasure to introduce Secretary of Defense, Lloyd J. Austin III. The Secretary will deliver opening remarks and then has time to take a few questions. Please note that I will moderate those questions and call on our journalists. And due to our schedule today, I would ask you to please limit your follow-ups and appreciate your assistance with this. Uh, with that, Mr. Secretary, over to you, sir. Thanks, Patrick. Um, good afternoon, everyone. We've had a great few days of discussion with my fellow ministers of defense. But before I get to that, let me add a few words about the terrible situation in Israel. We are appalled by the emerging scope of the atrocities committed by the terrorists of Hamas. Our hearts are with all those who, whose loved ones uh, were murdered or wounded or taken hostage. No country would live with the wholesale killing and kidnapping of innocent people including the very old and the very young. Now, yesterday, I mentioned the changes to our force posture to reinforce deterrence in the region. And I want to underscore that message. Nobody should try to take advantage of this vile Hamas assault to cause more bloodshed or instability. Our support for Israel is rock solid. We're working urgently to get Israel what it needs to defend itself, including munitions and Iron, iron Dome interceptors, interceptors, and we will do so even as we continue to support the people of Ukraine as they fight against Russian aggression. But make no mistake, we can and will stand by Israel even as we stand by Ukraine. United States can walk and chew gum at the same time. So let me turn to the agenda of this defense ministerial. Especially in challenging times, it's great to be back at NATO. Let me thank uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg for bringing, up, bringing us all together today and for all of his leadership. Now, this was our first meeting of defense ministers since the Vilnius summit in July. Our leaders made historic decisions at Vilnius to enhance NATO's deterrence and defense, and we also had the privilege of welcoming Finland, which joined a NATO summit for the first time as an ally. Let me urge all of our allies to support the immediate accession, uh, accession of Sweden, which is both a proud democracy and a highly capable defense partner. Vilnius was a watershed for NATO's collective deterrence and defense. Our leaders endorse NATO's new, new family of regional defense plans, and that will significantly improve our ability to deter and defend against any threat. We also established a new multinational and multi-domain allied reaction force. This new force will provide more response options to threats and crises across all domains. At Vilnius, our leaders also endorsed a new defense investment pledge. And that pledge affirmed our shared commitment as allies to spend at least 2% of GDP on defense. Let me also underscore the words of at least 2%. We urgently need to do more to fulfill the commitments that all of our leaders have made, and this investment will help us strengthen our defense industrial bases, and standardize critical munitions, and improve NATO interoperability. NATO's new Defense Production Action Plan will guide this important work. It will aggregate demand to meet our capability targets and encourage multinational cooperation and foster more agile procurement and enhance our transparency with industry. Finally, at Vilnius, we reaffirmed our enduring commitment to a free and sovereign Ukraine. We established the NATO-Ukraine Council, 
We agreed to develop the comprehensive assistance package into a multi-year program for critical non-lethal aid. We expanded NATO's practical non-lethal support for Ukraine, including medical supplies and MREs. And that complements bilateral security assistance that the United States and other countries around the world have provided to Ukraine over the past 20 months. And I should say again that the Ukrainian forces continue to make steady progress in their counteroffensive. So today we discuss the work that we've done together since Vilnius to implement these important decisions. And that included conversations on several key issues, including deterrence and defense to support Ukraine and NATO's ongoing operations in the Western Balkans and in Iraq. So it was a productive day, and I am tremendously proud of all the progress that NATO has made. We've still got a lot more to do, but we will get it done together. And we will live up to the commitments that we have, we have made to ourselves and to each other. Now let me be clear, NATO is a defensive alliance, and we will not be drawn into Putin's illegal war of choice, but we will stand up for Ukraine's right to defend itself. And we will continue to strengthen this alliance for the challenges to come, and we will defend the sovereignty and territory of every NATO ally. America's commitment to that mission is ironclad, and so is our commitment to Article 5. And one last thing, we're especially proud that we'll be hosting our allies next summer at the Washington Summit. And we're excited to come together to commemorate the 75th anniversary of this great alliance. So thanks again for being here. And with that, I'll be happy to take a couple of questions. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, first question will go to Gordon Lubold, Wall Street Journal. I know you like multi-part questions. So I'm going to make two different questions real quick. Um, the first one is the crisis in Gaza has be amounted to a moment of emotion for the Israelis and for the world. Um, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu referring to uh, Hamas militants as dead men walking, your own people referring to an ISIS moment. Into this emotion and into this conflict, uh, the U.S. is pouring uh, munitions, weaponry, and other things. I'm wondering what uh, assurances or what conditions even have you asked for from the Israelis to make sure that some of this weaponry, that's American weaponry, is used discriminately and not indiscriminately and potentially um, killing civilian, uh, innocent civilians in Gaza. And then the second question is just, um, is ISR coverage part of the package of offerings? And I guess a third one, have you seen <laughs> Have you seen any amassing of any Hezbollah forces along the border? Thank you. Any amassing of Hezbollah forces? Yeah. Uh, in terms of, thanks, Gordon, for the questions, but uh, even though there were like six of them, but uh, in, in terms of uh, conditions that we would place on the uh, security assistance that we're providing to uh, Israel, we've not placed any conditions on, uh, on the provision of this equipment. This is a professional military uh, led by professional leadership, and we would uh, hope and expect that uh, they would uh, do the right things in the prosecution of their, of their campaign. And, and we'll, uh, we will make sure that we'll leave it to them to define what their operations are going to look like. Uh, but again, we have no reason to believe that uh, they would do anything different. Um, in terms of um, our provision, our assistance, in, uh, intel intelligence assistance to Ukraine, uh, to, excuse me, to Israel, um, we will support them uh, in any way that we can, uh, and certainly intelligence is a part of that, and I won't uh, get into the specifics of what that means, ISR, other types of collection. 
we've worked with the uh, Israelis, uh, you know, over many, many years, and uh, those sharing uh, mechanisms are there, those channels are there to, to share uh, information, uh, and we will look to continue to do that. So, um, so I think I got Hezbollah, okay. Uh, we've not seen any massing of forces along the border, uh, and, uh, and again, this is something that, uh, you know, the Israelis are, are focused on. We are also looking for additional things that, that, that could widen the, the conflict here, and hopefully uh, we won't see those things, but uh, we've not seen that to this point. So. Thank you very much. Our, our next question will go to Thomas Gucha, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. Thanks a lot, uh, Thomas Kuchka with Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I also asked a couple of questions also related uh, to Israel. Um, the first one would be, have there been other allies besides the US and Germany that today pledged military support to Israel? And uh, when it comes to this support, in your assessment, what would be or could be the further needs uh, of Israel uh, if this conflict uh, continues? Um, and a third question, somewhat related to what my uh, colleague asked, um, Secretary General Stoltenberg told us after the meeting, or he, uh, he made an announcement after the meeting that allies have made clear Israel has a right uh, to defend itself, but with proportionality. Could you please explain um, if you share this, um, this, uh, this um, statement with proportionality and what it actually entails in a situation like this. Thank you. Yeah, so um, as we uh, were briefed by Minister Gallant earlier today, uh, what we heard from allies in the room was uh, a unity among uh, all of the allies uh, in terms of strong support uh, for Israel and unity in condemning the horrible actions of Hamas. Um, what the United States is doing, uh, you've heard us talk about a number of times, and that is we are, we're moving rapidly to provide uh, Israel uh, what, uh, what it needs uh, to continue to protect its citizens uh, and to uh, protect its, uh, its territory. Uh, and uh, you've already seen the evidence of, of that happening, and uh, that will continue. And we'll stay engaged with, uh, with the Israeli leadership and make sure that, uh, you know, we're tracking along with, uh, with their needs as those needs change, and as is the case with any fight uh, or, or any uh, operation, uh, needs will change as, uh, as, as uh, you know, things evolve there. So we anticipate that. You know, I've talked to Minister Gallant uh, just about every day since, uh, since this began. We had a great relationship uh, leading into this, uh, and that made it very easy for us to, uh, to connect and, uh, and exchange uh, information in, uh, in, in frank and open ways. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue to do what, what, what's needed to, uh, uh, to uh, support them, and we're going to do it as rapidly as possible. In terms of needs for Israel going forward, again, I go back to what I just said. This, this will evolve, and, and those needs will emerge, and we'll let uh, Minister Gallant and the, uh, and, and the Israeli leadership define what those requirements are. We'll try to anticipate as best we can, uh, and, and I am sure that uh, countries on a bilateral basis will engage uh, Minister Gallant, and, uh, and work with them, and if they can provide uh, assistance or resources, then they, they, will, they will do that. I, I would agree with uh, Secretary General in that the Israelis have a right to protect their people, and, uh, and we, would, we would expect that they're going to remain focused on that. So, and I won't try to define proportionality for you. So. Thank you very much. Our next question will go to Will Dunlop, Agency France Press. I'll keep it to two questions. Um, Secretary Austin, first, did the United States have any advance warning or other indication that Hamas would attack Israel? 
And second, there have been contradictory reports about Iran's potential role. What's the latest U.S. assessment on Tehran's involvement in or knowledge of the Hamas attack? Thank you. Give me that second piece again. Um, there have been contradictory reports about um, Iran's potential role in the attacks. Uh, if any, um, what is the latest U.S. assessment on Tehran's involvement in or knowledge of the attack? We'll take the second part first. And I think you heard us say yesterday, well, that uh, we've not seen any indication that uh, Iran was involved in the planning uh, or the execution of this attack. We've not seen any, any of those indications yet. And this is something that we remain focused on. Uh, and, uh, and of course, um, you know, what we know at this point is that uh, there, there are no indications that w that was the case. But again, we will remain focused on this. Um, we also know that Iran has a long track record of uh, supporting Hamas. Uh, and so there's a, there's a relationship there that extends uh, over the years. Uh, but, but in terms of uh, their uh, active participation in the planning and the execution of this attack, We've not seen any indications of that yet. So, um, in terms of uh, early warning or, or, or our uh, uh, indi indications and warning that we may have had to uh, that this was going to occur, of course, well, if we if we had those indications, we would share them with our with uh, with Israel. Uh, but uh, to my knowledge, we did not uh, see that. So. And we'll go to Stuart Lau, Politico EU. It's Chair Lau from Politico. Mr. Secretary, a couple of questions. First, regarding the disruption of the undersea cables between Finland and Estonia, um, is there any indication that Russia may be behind this? And what possible actions should NATO consider if state actors are behind it? And a second question about um, military commitment to Europe. Is there any indication that future delivery of Iron Dome to Israel might come at a cost of existing security commitments to Europe, especially Poland? Thank you. Um, first, uh, I am certainly aware of the uh, reports of the um, attacks on the, um, the infrastructure, undersea infrastructure there. And, uh, and I have been in touch with uh, my colleagues uh, in Finland and, and uh, Estonia they are investigating this, and so because they are investigating this, uh, I won't speculate on who may have been involved. I think we have the, the right thing to do is to uh, wait for the results of the investigation. I will tell you that I, uh, uh, we have offered our help to Finland, anything that they need to, uh, to conduct this investigation, uh, we, we stand ready to provide. Um, in terms of iron, you know, what's being provided to Israel and will that disadvantage uh, other countries in Europe? I certainly don't think so. I think, uh, again, uh, for our focus is to make sure that we get Israel what it needs in order to protect itself and protect its, uh, its uh, sovereign territory. So, um, and I won't speculate on, you know, one way or the other on, uh, you know, but, but I will tell you that Poland is, uh, you know, has a lot of capability, and as you, as you may know, I am in contact with my Polish counterpart uh, on a routine basis, uh, and, and they have played a key role in providing uh, security assistance uh, to, to Ukraine. So um, I think, uh, again, my focus is going to continue to be uh, to support Ukraine and to provide uh, support to Israel. Uh, as rapidly and as effectively as we can. And so I'll leave it at that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for today. This